to both again for joining our uh, little event here. Uh, thank you for t attending our panel discussion. We'll jump right in. Uh, as you are aware, this is recording, so we can provide it to participants who cannot be attending this and as well as hopefully extend it to the YouTube channel if that is possible. Um, <clears throat> so we hope that this opportunity gives a little bit more insight for hopefully students and graduates uh, looking for a career in data and hope that the panelists that we are going to present soon can give some insight into both Tableau and a career in data. So we'll get started. And just to uh, briefly introduce myself and to the panelists as well, my name is Joe. I am from San Gabriel, California. I'm currently attending the University of Southern California, FIDON, and majoring in uh, business administration. And I am obviously a student ambassador. So why Tableau? <clears throat> uh, my journey with Tableau started in my statistics class just last year. I really fell in love with just the way I can easily convert data sources to visualizations and identify kind of like the key findings that are really important to my analysis and some of the projects that I've run. I'm also a huge sports fan and I really love to kind of dig into the player statistics and use Tableau to create these amazing visualizations. And throughout my college career, I've always kind of told myself that I need to strengthen my technical skills and thankfully, I have stumbled upon Tableau and its ambassadorship program to make this into reality and continue to improve my skills in Tableau desktop. Just shortly, my hobbies, I like to go mountain biking. I've kind of hopped onto YouTube workouts, which is pretty cool, and Seahawks, Lakers, and Dodgers fan. And that's just a little bit about me. So, hi, everyone. My name is Jesse. I'm also a student ambassador. So I'm originally from Tomajos in Kent, which is in England. Um, I'm currently studying biochemistry at the University of Southampton. Um, I'm in my master's year, so as you can imagine, it's, it's quite stressful. Um, my journey with Tableau is a little bit different to Joe's. So I first came across it at a careers fair where someone essentially showed me Tableau and um, I was, I just, I really like analyzing numbers. So I freaked out a little bit, thought it was really cool. Um, and then I found out it's one of the most sought after skills. So I was like, well, it excites me. So I'm just going, just going to do it. And here I am. Uh, my hobbies include baking, procrastination, Netflix, and I play a real life version of Quidditch. All right. And as we get started, uh, I see that there's a participant. Feel free to just drop in any questions that you may have throughout our conversation with uh, our panelists here. And for our event, we have two special panelists, Sarah, Sarah Bartlett and Kendra McRae. And again, thank you so much for being a part of this event and being our panelists. And we can kind of start this off by hopefully introducing yourselves and then we'll dive right into the questions. We can start left to right. Maybe we can start off with Sarah. Yeah, sure. So, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting us here today. So uh, my name's Sarah Bartlett. I'm a Tableau Zen Master and a Tableau Social Ambassador. Um, I work as a senior consultant for a company called Slalom, where I'm based in London. And I work with um, clients to kind of help with their Tableau needs. So that could be anything from building out dashboards, helping them fix dashboards that they may have like broken, or just designing out their whole like, data strategy and building out those internal communities. Um, I've been using Tableau for around seven years. Uh, in terms of why Tableau, it was I was previously a fully Microsoft Excel person. I loved Excel, did everything in Excel. And then the company I was working for said, you know what, we're going to get Tableau. We're going to send you on a training course. Uh, and I went on that course for like two days and I was completely blown away by what Tableau could do. Um, and then, uh, yeah, since then, I've just been getting involved in the community and just kind of say yes to everything. Hence why I've got to where I am today. Um, I currently run a, a project called Iron Quest as well. Um, and I'm involved in the Tableau Equity Task Force with Kendra. So that's me. Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, my name is Kendra McRae, and thank you for having us um, today. I'm really excited to speak with you all. Um, so, a little bit about me I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. So, uh, you know, go Seahawks. But um, outside of that, I am also a Zen master and a Tableau public ambassador. Um, and then I, like Sarah was talking about, um, I serve on the uh, Tableau Community Equity Task Force, the Data Leaders Advisory Board, 
and just uh, a couple of, you know, different uh, kind of community initiatives. Um, oh, and also I am a coach for Workout Wednesdays. So if you guys are ever looking for a community led uh, initiative, um, of course, Iron Quest, but like want to put in a plug for, um, you know, uh, Workout Wednesday. Um, so uh, professionally, I own my own analytics consulting firm, Lemotis. Um, and so I, you know, just kind of, we do everything from data visualization, data strategy, optimization, testing. I mean, if there's a number there, we, we deal with it. Um, and just kind of really trying to drive uh, enablement and data literacy within organizations that we work with. Um, prior to that, I was the executive director of analytics uh, at Ramsey Solutions, and I cut my teeth in analytics at Deloitte Consulting. Um, and, all, and I also serve as the uh, Tableau evangelist uh, for Affleck Insurance. Um, kind of like Sarah was talking about, I am the queen of saying yes to everything. Um, <laughs> So, um, you know, because this is really like a passion area, like, you know, really creating, uh, you know, kind of driving uh, not only enablement, but just uh, accessibility for, you know, data and data uh, adjacent fields um, for, you know, everybody. And so this is, um, it's a, I can be a part of that. Um, I, I'm honored to kind of use my time, talents and resources to, to make that happen. Um, why Tableau? Um, I mean, I could be cheeky and say, why not Tableau? But the biggest thing is, um, you know, really gave me an opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, bridge my technical uh, talents with my creativity. Um, and it also just cut down the time to value to actually build stuff, right? So like Sarah, I was the Excel queen, could build financial models in my sleep um, and, you know, could bend Excel to my, you know, to my will. Um, but, you know, the path was a lot easier and straightforward in Tableau. And so I, you know, I decided to kind of kick the tires a little bit, fell in love and then um, joined the community and then really just kind of, um, you know, kind of built it from there. Awesome. And thank you to you both uh, for saying yes to this event as well. I'm sure you are very tight on schedule and have a lot going on within the Tableau community and outside your career. Would love to really get to know a little bit deeper throughout our conversation. And so uh, Jesse and I will kind of rotate off with questions that we have. Um, my first question to you both, and then maybe we can continue uh, from Sarah and Kendra uh, in, in order. Considering uh, the events of the past year with the pandemic and everything, a lot of people are forced to work uh, online remotely. Do you think that, uh, this is our first question, do you think that the world is going to move towards being more data-driven, more people focused on a career in data? Interesting question. So yeah, I think um, last year really opened people's eyes a lot in terms of data and how to read uh, data visualizations and also the appreciation for how important they can be. I know in the UK, and I'm sure Jesse can relate to this, um, the UK government will be leading these daily briefings. So every day, Doris Johnson or one of his cabinet would lead a daily briefing where they'd bring up a PowerPoint presentation, which actually had Tableau visits like, embedded inside it. Um, and the British public became really reliant on these charts to see what was happening, like how many COVID um, cases had there been, and um, what was the trend. And we began to become more familiar with things like log scales. And people like um, John Burns Murdoch, who works for the Financial Times in the UK as well, was publishing these charts. Everyone became highly dependent on, like, oh my gosh, what's happening? What does the what does the curve look like? Um, and I think, like now, I see people like my parents who wouldn't really kind of paid much interest into what I, I did before, suddenly took an interest in, in data visualization and started being able to read charts that perhaps they would have kind of turned a blind eye to. So I think definitely we've all seen the, the importance of data and the appreciation for how powerful it can be in, in telling us really the truth behind what's going on. Right. Um, and I would echo that, you know, just with, especially with COVID, um, you know, 19 the emergence, like, you know, seeing the curve chart or the line chart, really, um, you know, it was a matter of life and death, right? And so you had kind of a captive audience of, you know, just uh, everybody in society just uh, learning how to read a chart, uh, understanding its impact to them, you know, and just really kind of activating data, you know, making data an active part of their lives, um, you know, versus kind of the, what it could have been, which is passive. 
Um, and so I think um, you have, like, I think you'll see the captive, you know, capture of, of attention um, from that. But I think um, the emergence of data beyond just what's happened in 2020 is just data is just becoming an omnipresent part of our lives. Um, you know, from healthcare to policing, all the things, right? And and so I think, um, you know, it's opened everybody's eyes to there's there's a field here, um, you know, for it. And so I think we'll see definitely see more people kind of enter that would not have traditionally um, been a part of data. Um, so. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for your comments. And I think I can definitely resonate with that. I think the way I joined this ambassadorship program is a lot of time opened up for me now that I'm just working all back at home, uh, taking my classes, everything doing online. And I stumbled upon this email with Tableau ambassadorship program where I really dove a little bit deeper into Tableau because you not only get to learn the 10 hour courses that they offer to kind of better hone your skills within Tableau, but you know, I think that the whole environment and the situation with the pandemic kind of reshaped my uh, goals, reshaped my opportunities to work with Tableau. Jesse? Yeah, just uh, one, I echo that. And um, two, I think Sarah's comment about how reliant we've become on looking at a graph and seeing what direction is the line going in um, has become uh, in, immeasurably important uh, in the past year. Um, and actually a quick question sort of uh, coming off of that is, is for both of you, why do you, why is data so important? Like why is data visualization and getting the right message across with, with what you're doing? Why is that so important? You go, you go, Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the big, because I mean, especially in high stakes environments, lives are on the line, right? Um, so it's it's not uh, it's not something that we can opt out of, um, you know, with any sort of kind of good conscience, right? So like, if you think about how data is now, you know, kind of used as a basis of policing and educational attainment, and you know, like basically in high stakes um, situations, healthcare. Um, and then even just COVID, like understanding, um, you know, is it safe to go outside or not, or, you know, kind of those type of interactions. I think, um, you know, it's really, that's, that's why it's so important. That's why we can't opt out. I think data visualization is important because um, it's a good quote. And it's not, um, it's not just for data visualization, but there's lies, damn lies, and, and statistics. But there's also uh, lies, damn lies, and bad charts. Um, and so, you know, like if someone didn't use a zero on, <laughs> on the axis or whatever, and it makes something look like a crazy sharp, you know, increase or decrease and like understanding how to read uh, charts um, and really kind of take away good, you know, information from them is important because it, it, it drives how we move throughout the world, right? Um, and so I think that's now becoming a life skill, just like uh, financial literacy is, right? So I think that's, you know, data literacy is, uh, I would argue, is quickly becoming the new financial literacy um, of, it's just a life skill that you need to have, honestly. Great. Um, thank you for your comments for that. And jumping a little bit deeper into Tableau, I know you both hold different ambassador positions within Tableau, Zen Master, uh, both of you are as well in, as in that position as well. What made you join the Tableau community as ambassadors? Um, and, so, yeah, sorry to, um, I know that Sarah, you didn't have a chance to touch upon why data is important. So feel free to uh, touch upon that as well. So sorry about that. No, that's fine. I, I was, I think Kendra covered it. I, I would agree with everything that she said. Um, but in terms of the Tableau ambassador piece, so I've, I'm in my third term. So a term is a year for an ambassador. So I'm in my third time. So I've been ambassador for quite a while now, but I'd say you don't get, uh, for us at least and not outside of the student ambassador program, you get selected, like you don't get a chance to say, oh, I want to be an ambassador. It's kind of like they select you. Um, so in at the time I became an ambassador, I was doing lots of things like participating in lots of community projects. Um, I was leading a user group in London. Um, I was just getting involved in kind of everything that was going on. Um, and I was very active on social media. Um, I just I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but I was tweeting a lot. Um, and that was kind of like, um, 
you know where people kind of found me and um, hence why I became a, a social ambassador because that kind of aligned nicely with what I was doing um, and just um, kind of underpinned all the, the kind of my values I was I was using social media as a way to kind of like welcome newcomers to the community to share any updates that uh, from Tableau um, and also via my blog as well as like sharing um, my processes or updates on projects that I was involved in so um, that was why I became an ambassador um, and I think it was a really nice way for me to kind of give back to the community as well and really amplify that message that I was trying to give. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely echo that. Um, so I was a long time lurker of the community. So I would like read probably Sarah's blogs and, <laughs> and, you know, like Andy Kribble stuff, right. And, um, you know, and I realized that there was just a point like, you know, obviously, they select you. So it's not, you know, uh, but saying yes to the call. Um, I, I did that because I think it's important to give back um, what you get. And I've gotten a lot from the community, you know, it's kind of definitely uh, changed the trajectory of my career, right? And so to be able to kind of pass that, uh, you know, pay that forward um, is important to me, as well as, you know, um, being, uh, you know, just like being a person where uh, not only I can pay it forward, but being, a, um, having people see me as well, right? Um, because oftentimes, um, you know, you don't necessarily see um, very diverse faces in tech spaces. Um, and so I think representation is important. And so, um, you know, for the, you know, the, the folks that are behind me. And so I, that's one, of, that's the other reason why I said yes was, yes, I understand it's a time commitment on an already busy schedule. But, um, you know, I think it's an important piece um, to, you know, to, to have, you know, to, to use your time and talents for. I like the uh, the term you used, a long time lurker in the community. Because I think at the moment that's probably what me and Joe are. Like we we're both kind of like seeing everything happening around us, um, and kind of trying to do it by ourselves and et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, so I shouldn't say that was a. I like I like that term. Um, <laughs> I did so that as well. Like I. I was very <laughs> reluctant to get involved. Like I was doing exactly what Kendra was doing, like stalking Andy Kreeble. Um, I even went to a conference, didn't speak to anybody. Um, I literally, like, I was really scared to post anything on Tableau Public in case somebody, I don't know, told me I'd done it wrong or like something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and then I eventually took the plunge. If you saw my, you can go on my Tableau Public profile and scroll right to the bottom and you'll see my first viz and it's really nothing special. It's like a line chart, but the second viz is, completely terrible um but at the time I thought it was fantastic and but it was a great I it took me a lot of courage to kind of pluck up and actually post that both mm -hmm. on Tableau Public and on social media um but by doing that it was I was actually welcomed in and then I got some really good feedback from people that along that journey that helped me kind of say well you know you could do it better by doing this um and then I just you know built that up every biz I did I'd get feedback and take it from there so I definitely saw a lot more benefit once I took the plunge and started getting involved rather than kind of like lurking from the sidelines yeah I can definitely uh, resonate with that I did have a lot of kind of like anxiety jumping into Tableau Public at first but I think once I got into the routine of it um, I realized that I got to start somewhere. I got to post something to really get something started. And so I think Kendra mentioned the workout Wednesdays. I adopted the sports fist Sundays quite often and try to um, create as many visualizations as I can within football and basketball and other sports. So I think that was one of the avenues uh, that I decided to take on how I can start my Tableau Public. Uh, Kendra, I don't know if you have any... Uh, additional comments about just dashboards, Tableau Public that you may want to add? I mean, the only thing, I mean, um, my, just like Sarah was mentioning, my first dashboards were absolutely horrible, uh, <laughs> like painfully so, right? So like every best practice, just like look at the opposite, that would be my dashboard. Uh, and I was proud of it, like, you know, because I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Cause you know, like, you know, I don't know, it, you know, it's like a newbie kind of hype that you have. Um, but, you know, I, I reluctantly kind of started uh, posting stuff to Tableau Public because I engaged with uh, Makeover Monday. And part of the requirement was that you had to pub, uh, post to public in order to get feedback and you had to like post on Twitter. 
And like I had gone to several conferences. In fact, I've spoken at uh, one of them and I never talked to anyone. Um, and so, I, you know, like TC 20 uh, ish um, or TC ish was probably the first time I actually like truly engaged um, with other people at the conference. Um, so like, uh, you know, it's just, I would say that for, it's very, it was intimidating and it can be uh, to join the community because you're always comparing your chapter one to someone's chapter 20, right? But you gotta like, like what I always like to say is, you know, go back to their earlier stuff and you'll understand that they were exactly where you were when they started, right? Um, and, and it's a humbling journey. And, and comparison is the thief of all joy, right? And so like be okay with where you are, but actively seek that feedback from the community because people are happy to give it to you. Um, and you gotta like figure out who you wanna get feedback from, right? Um, that's, that should be the hardest part. Um, and then, you know, just take it from there. But, you know, I would say just jump in because it will change your experience um, with Tableau. Right, it'll accelerate your learning and also even make some professional connections that could help you, um, you know, land a job or or five. Yeah, that's a uh, that's really solid advice. Just for just think just for life in general, you know, just got to be happy with where you are. You've got to keep pushing on, um, mm -hmm. keep trying. Yeah, because people um, get, like it, you know, discouraged when they're looking at mm -hmm. someone that's you know making you know, break, you know, using trigonometry to break the tool, you know, like using Tableau in, in amazing ways. And they're like, man, I can only make a line chart. And so they get discouraged because they're like, I'm never going to get there. And then they stop. But they, you know, and it's really the thing is just keep going. All right. Mm -hmm. And you will get there or you'll find where you want to be. Like, I'm never going to be the trigonometry Tableau girl. Never. Um, and, I and, yeah, <laughs> and I don't aspire to be that, right? And so it's mm -hmm. like, you know, find your space, your lane that you feel comfortable with and own that, right? And, and, and plan your journey for, for that. Um, I, you know, that's the, the biggest piece is like, there's so many off ramps and, 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 you know, places to compare, just figure out what you like and like live there. Mm. Yeah, right. I and really I think, like that. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead, I Sarah. Love that. I was going to say, if you look at the different people in the community, the different Zen masters, we all kind of specialize in different things. And I'm never going to be that trigonometry person either, Kandra, like never in a million years. That's just <laughs> not my thing. You're not going to see me building out those kind of wacky visits. Uh, and that's fine because there's other people that do that. And they do it very well. And that, that's just not an area that I'm going to pursue. Um, but so yeah we each have our each unique skills and I think find what you're good at what, find what you enjoy and kind of focus on that thing mm -hmm. awesome yeah yep. um so you just mentioned that um about Zen Masters and you obviously both you and Kandra are Zen Masters um I wondered if you could expand on what a Zen Master is um um what like how you get there what what you do as a Zen Master Yes, yeah, so um, Zen masters are recognized in three areas. So for teaching, for collaboration and for ma tool mastery. So you kind of have to like focus on those three areas. So um, we're recognized as people that actually give back and teach others. So whether that be through sharing blog posts, uh, maybe giving feedback, maybe even teaching Tableau, um, also by collaborating. So working with other people, so projects like uh, work at Wednesday, which Kandra is involved in, um, or maybe collaborating on a biz with somebody else, um, or like with Iron Quest, I collaborate with somebody different every single month um, to give feedback to the community, um, or just you know working with other people to maybe set up um, little initiatives or maybe give a talk together. Um, just looking at ways to just work together, and not working in isolation, um, and then tool mastery is. Um, you know, just showing that you can use Tableau, you know, you know what, you know how the tool works and sharing that knowledge. So again, giving feedback, maybe writing blog posts, um, producing visits, <laughs> trigonometry if you want, um, but just areas where you can just show that you know what you're doing and how you can actually teach people um, th those skills. Those are the three areas that they're kind of assessed against. Kandra, I don't know mm -hmm. if you want to add to that as well. Um, no, I mean, the only other thing is just like also other community uh, engagement too. So like speaking at like user groups, um, you know, kind of sharing your knowledge in, uh, in any way that you can. 
um, you know, to help support uh, and enable the community. Um, but now Sarah like said it perfectly. And just as a plug, I too want to be an Iron Quest collaborator one day. That's on my list. <laughs> I'll put you on my list for this year, Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> You guys can tell I have no shame. It's all right. So maybe that might be a oh, I'd, be, I'd love to have you. <laughs> I uh, Last a couple of months back, um, I asked my friend, like, Lorna Brown, like, do you want to be a collaborator? She was like, I thought you'd never ask. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully that all works out between uh, you and Kendra uh, and Sarah. Um, yeah, thank you for that. So kind of shifting gear a little bit. Um, I know this is also trying to give insight for students in a career in data. So as you know, people who are already working uh, in a company or in a business um, kind of gearing towards data, especially for students who are going to be graduating um, and looking for jobs like this, what are some advice in kind of preparing these students to really dive into the workforce, maybe specifically in your industry or just in general about how to approach um, the kind of anxiety of looking for a job? I mean, for me, I think it comes down to um, like, obviously, you know, having pretty good technicals, right? But that's not gonna be, that's not a differentiator. Like everybody, um, you know, coming out of, of university will have, uh, you know, a tableau or some you know tool um insert tool uh, competency here or coding or whatever right it's really the soft skills that will make you stand out in the crowd right so it's do you have intellectual curiosity right do you know how to ask really great questions that actually will you know lead to some sort of impactful outcome right um do you are you willing to put in sweat equity meaning even if you don't have natural talent in something um, are you willing to outwork your lack of talent, right? Like, you know, like those are like the grit. Are you resourceful, right? Like, you know, so if, if, if um, path A doesn't work, you know, do you have contingency plans that you've already kind of thought about or do you like freeze up on the spot, right? And so like, I would definitely say like crafting that narrative of those soft skills or the, you know, kind of the intangibles uh, will make you stand out in a pretty crowded um, applicant pool, right? And I think um, the other piece is making sure like, you know, when you apply for a job, it's a, actually a job you want, right? Think about like, you're gonna spend eight hours, 40 hours a week, maybe some more, maybe less, right? You gotta make sure you enjoy it. Life's too short to have something that's, you know, kind of mind numbingly boring or it just takes your spirit, right? So find something that you would enjoy with a company um, that is aligned in your values Right. Um, and also the other thing is make sure that, you know, when you do get that call back and you're talking to that hiring manager, is that somebody that you gel with? Right. Like, cause I, ultimately that is, um, you know, that's going to be a, especially with a, a new job or, you know, kind of when you're just entering the job market that can, um, you know, kind of make or break, um, you know, like how you move, um, you know, in your career. Right. And so, you know, I would just kind of say, focus on the stuff that like, under, have a, take an inventory of what you like and what you want to do and find that job and don't be afraid to apply to the jobs that you don't have 100% of the qualifications, right? Don't, um, you know, exclude, like put yourself on an exclude list by not applying just because you're like, uh, I don't have, you know, one out of the 10 skills, but you have the, the rest of the nine. Go ahead and apply to that job, right? Um, they'll let you know if you belong or if you don't and make the case that you belong. Um, so I, I would say uh, life favors the bold. So if you want something, go ahead and get it. Um, but also make sure that you have that narrative around the intangibles um, to make you stand out. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I mean, especially as Jesse and I students ourselves, we're probably going to be eventually at that stage as well once we graduate. Um, <laughs> definitely made all the, uh, love the good points that you have made, Kendra. Sarah, did you have anything to add? Yeah, no, I echo what Kandra said. I mean, if you don't apply, you can guarantee you won't get it. So, you don't like, <laughs> um, so you might as well apply. And at least then you, if you don't get it, at least you tried. Um, and then you may get, 
gain some experience from that process that you might get to an interview stage you'd get to experience an interview and there's things that you can take away from that even if you're not successful in in getting the role um i've been interviewing some like fresh graduates for um, our company recently um and what i've noticed is some of them can't articulate to me why they want the job <laughs> like like why do you want to work in database they're like uh and they may you know come up with something but it's clear that they haven't really done their research or truly understand what a role uh, doing data biz would entail um, and those are the ones you know that haven't been successful so I really want to see that passion um, you don't need you know if you if you really want to pursue this field you don't need money to get started like Tableau Public's free you can start getting dug in and I, what I really want to see is people actually trying and giving it a go um, and like maybe post, posting things to their Tableau public profile and as we mentioned before like participating in these projects and showing progression so like showing like slight improvements week after week um, and just showing that you're interested in actually getting involved. And, the, and just yeah. to um, uh, tack on to what Sarah just mentioned, use Tableau public as your portfolio. Right. And so like when you're, you know, so of course, you know, you want to show week over week improvements, but maybe like you, you know, like really stepped up your game um, in, in Tableau Public and you're like, you're a beast at it. You can go ahead and hide the not so, you know, cute ones. Um, you know, you, you could always see them if, you know, if you want to see where you start or whatever, but you can also share your portfolio with um, potential employers so that they already, so like they know what you're bringing before you even sit at that table. Right, and so that's just um, you know another way to kind of utilize the Tableau as a as a, a means of boosting uh, some career opportunities. Mm. Mm. Thank you. I think that uh, that's one really helpful for like Joe said. Like we're obviously we're just coming up, um, and I see Fernanda's also nodding. So yeah, coming into co moving into into a career and thinking about whether it's with data that both everything uh, you guys just said is really solid advice. Can I just jump in? Mm, of course. Okay. Well, my name is Fernanda. I am Brazilian. I live in Madrid. I am attending a master's degree in uh, big data and analytics. I um, got out of my comfort zone pretty much. Uh, I well studied business administration, but long time ago. So I'm kind of uh, getting updated in this whole area. And I'm really... Um, I'm now learning uh, Tableau and I'm, I'm amazed by this tool. I'm very visual myself and uh, how Tableau makes complex concepts uh, uh, easy is fantastic because I think it, uh, sometimes it can be very hard to make an interpretation of a graphic of um, uh, anyway. So I, um, I want big data is such a huge field and um, I'm kind of trying to find in, in this field, what should I follow? Because <laughs> you have everything from Python, from you know the hardware part, from the server, from the cloud. So I think I'm going to stick with Tableau. That's what I loved uh, the most since I started um, the course. I'm taking notes like crazy. I don't know if you, <laughs> if you checked. Um, I, I have a question. When you, when you mention com community, Tableau community, is it what the, uh, the public, the Tableau, Tableau public? Or what, what is it? How do I uh, search for help in the community when you mention that? Yes, yeah, so the community is like everything that surrounds um the product so it's the people it's the it's tableau public it's um the initiatives there's a great website um i'll, I'll post the link in the chat in a second mm -hmm. um which tableau have set up where it's kind of like the home for the community so you can find access to like learning training resources access to information about the projects um that you can get involved in how you can maybe participate on the community forums and answer questions or ask questions um it, everything you need is there it's like a one-stop shop so um i'll mm -hmm. post a link to that so you can get a, a full overview of what it means uh, to be part of the community great i appreciate it Thank and you. as kandra's t-shirt says uh, we're often called like the data fam so if you look at hashtag data fam on any like social media platform you'll find posts from the tableau community mm -hmm. okay yeah and just to quickly add i know we were talking about tableau public a lot and just for fernanda's um help yeah, it's a free software system. I don't know if you started using them, 
but you can basically connect your spreadsheets or file and create an interactive data visualizations for the web. So it's for basically as, uh, as the title states for the public to see. And as Kendra mentioned, um, they can basically give, get fee give feedbacks to those data visualizations, which will be, which will be helpful in uh, improving uh, and getting started on uh, data visualizations as well. I have to start working on mine. Which one should be my first, <laughs> my first project? What do you enjoy? Pick something that you that you're passionate about and uh -huh. start, start from, from there. there. Yeah, maybe I. Well, I have to work on a final project for the master's degree, and our group chose to um, develop a a model uh, to predict how the um, meteorological events. Um, interfere with insurance rates. For example, when it snows too much, there are more accidents. And then how can they predict? So I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking, how can I use Tableau in, in this project? So a Tableau starting to learn now, so I'm lost. Uh, so Tableau actually um, recently uh, started um, having some predictive capabilities within them. Oh, um, uh -huh. And so you can leverage... Um, those functions, uh, depending on how complex your stuff is, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also, it has integrations with like uh, Tab or Python, like through like Tab mm -hmm. So, I would kind of explore those two, you know, kind of uh, places, and those are not places, but capabilities to see if mm -hmm. there's a fit for what you're doing. Um, I think um, if you're looking for entryways into the community, like, just like Sarah said, like, find out what you like. So Joe likes sports. So sports of his Sunday is what mm -hmm. he, he digs. Um, like, but there's some, like, the way I got started was Makeover Monday. Um, you know, so it's basically, um, you take um, an ugly viz, or sometimes not so ugly, you know, you, you like, take a, a viz that's out there in the world. And you kind of put your own spin on it, right? It gives you some, um, it allows you to flex some of those design uh, skills without, you know, trying to, uh, you know, scour the world for data or, or anything else like that. And then also it has MM Viz Review tied to it. Um, so you can kind of get weekly feedback if you want it. Um, and so and then, uh, Eva and, um, and Andy Kreeble, um, like Andy is like, Zen master hall of famer. Um, and so like, you know, so you're getting feedback from those folks. Iron quest is also awesome. Um, because it gives you some of the, in the muscles that you can flex, especially when Iron Viz comes around every, every year, cause you've been practicing every month for it. So like, honestly, just figure out like what you want to do. So like, I think, uh, Sarah mentioned, she was going to put a link to, I think is it the data hub community hub or yeah. Yeah, like, figure it like read that figure out where, where you like where your interests lie and like just explore and then don't be afraid to like drop out of stuff too like because you know i always like to do the like, little taste test you know sometimes i you know might you know taste uh makeover monday maybe it didn't work for me so i'm gonna go to sports fit sunday or workout wednesday like go on a tour right and then you'll figure out what you want mm -hmm. okay great thank you thank you for um for asking questions Fernanda um it's 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 it, this is this event is much uh, much better when the the audience are getting what they want from it so uh thank you for asking questions and thank you both Sarah and Kander for answering them so so eloquently um thanks so. just have a, have a quick question for Sarah so you mentioned that you do uh client work um mm. I think you, Kendra does as well <laughs> Okay, you both do. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, can you expand what client work means? Because we've heard, me and Joe have definitely heard client work a lot, um, but it's not necessarily 100% clear what client work means. Um, so if you could like sort of give an overview of that and like what the what your day to day looks like doing client work. Yeah, sure. So a client is a, essentially a, a customer of, of a, the well, like for my in my case, the, the company that I work for. So we're employed to deliver services for for the client um so they all ask us to come in and with a usually with a specific kind of ask so it might be um we've just bought tableau and we want to maybe migrate all of our current dashboards which are in some other tool into tableau so we'd like you uh, your help in kind of like designing that and, and building those out um it, it's essentially just you know delivering what they need which they can't 
complete themselves. So maybe they're calling on us quite often for our expertise in these areas. Um, so we can advise um, and we can help shape something that will help them advance in the future. Hmm. I can't say it any better than Sarah just did. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and every day is different. Um, every project's different. So yeah, it's it's yeah. That's the beauty of consulting because you you're not kind of sucked into something for too long. Um, you, you you get what you need to do done, and then you leave and go and do something else. It sounds quite dynamic, like the environment, because you're if you if you're meeting different needs for different people, that that surely that must help you expand your skills as well, because you're oh, yeah. constantly getting different yeah. stimulus with yeah. within Tableau that's the great thing about it because you get exposed mm. to different industries and, mm. and like every project I do is in a different industry completely different <laughs> ask um so it's stretching me as well and it's forcing me to kind of like learn new techniques um learn about new industries and how they work um it's, it's really I've learned so much in the time that I've been doing it awesome um thank you for that perspective and I think that is also a point where how I'm interested in pursuing a field within like analytics consulting as well. Um, just consulting in general, because it does open up avenues to learning about different industries, getting used to kind of working on the fly and learning new things as always. Um, I We have one more question on our little list here, but uh, maybe we can kind of wrap it up with this last question. And if Fernanda has any other follow-up questions, we can open up to that and kind of wrap up the event. Um, I guess, uh, Coming back to Tableau, as we're all a member of Tableau community, um, how has Tableau specifically kind of started your career or helped you in your careers? Who do you want to go first? All right. Um, so my career, I'm, I'm an elder millennial, so I... Um... <laughs> So my career kind of started before uh, I think Tableau hit the mainstream. Um, but I, I, like Sarah mentioned earlier, I was kind of the Excel queen. Um, so I went, you know, I had a, you know, I, I worked in finance for the for the longest time, and then I made the transition over to analytics. But I think specifically how Tableau has changed the trajectory, trajectory is it's given me a focus. Right, because like um, I have like professional ADD, meaning like I like to dabble in a little bit of everything, right? Um, and so, um, you know, definitely building out models, machine learning, um, you know, kind of financial modeling, um, like a little bit of everything. But Tableau has kind of given me the space to, um, you know, kind of scratch the creative itch that I have that you don't necessarily get with some of the other with some of the other kind of um, fields with or sub subfields within uh, analytics, but also has uh, um, been able to help me bridge my the technicals, right? Because the tool is constantly changing and evolving. And also other companies are starting to, you know, kind of wake up to data and analytics and everything else. And Tableau sits at like almost in the middle of a lot of that stuff, right? And so from a skills perspective, it's one of the most in-demand um, you know, like skills to have right now. Um, and so, because I, I like, um, a lot of people will say that reporting is the Trojan horse for analytics. And so Tableau, a, a lot of times is, is that Trojan horse, right? Um, and so, um, you know, like being able to leverage the, the platform and help other people like, you know, see their data and understand it in ways that they wouldn't have seen it with Excel or random cross tabs and all that kind of stuff like is, is the magical moment. And I like that feeling, right? And so that's kind of why I um, have stuck with this the longest. And I've been working with Tableau for about seven years, right? Um, you know, like I, I dabbled in everything, right? I've dabbled in Power BI um, and also Click and all the others, right? So I have familiarity with it, but nothing kind of won my heart and my mind. Um, like Tableau. Um, and so that's kind of, um, I guess, it, how it's shaped my career um, and also how it's, um, you know, kind of retained me as a fan. Yeah, and I'd say for me, I wouldn't hesitate to say that Tableau completely like changed my life. Like everything since since I found Tableau, everything changed. Well, since I got involved in the community, should I say, because I 
not that lurking kind of stage where nothing changed. But um, before Tableau, where I started off my career, I studied economics. I started working as an economist for a year um, and then decided that I didn't want to be an economist. Um, so that I then like looked, sought out other jobs and eventually got a job as um, an analyst looking at um, it was holidays and the pricing data for holidays and actually setting the prices for package holidays. And that was, it was an analytical role, but we were using Excel. And I often look back and think how amazing would it have been if I'd used, had, had Tableau was around then and we could have used Tableau because it just would have been so much better. But I did that for a while um, and then got another role as a different analyst and current, constantly work with data and analytics. But when I found Tableau, it kind of supercharged everything. Um, and if, as Kandra mentioned, I really found something I was passionate about and something that not only did I want to do at work, but I'd like to do in my free time as well. And I can't say I, that about anything else. Like I wasn't using Excel in my free time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was quite happy to go and use Tableau and um, maybe build visualizations on things that interest me um, at my, in my weekends. And the, the benefit of doing that was I could actually learn new techniques in the weekend or in the evenings and then take that learning and take it back to work. And that's how essentially I learned in the beginning because I, I mentioned at the beginning, I did a two day training course, which was great, but that was not enough to teach me everything I need to know about Tableau. So when I went back to work and I tried to apply what I'd learned, I quickly realized that I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, so that's when I sought out blog posts um, for people like Andy Kreeble. Um, and that was around the time he founded the Project Makeup on Monday. And that just like Kandra, that's how I kind of really pushed my skills um, and by doing that I managed to get a new job as a um, Tableau consultant not in a, not where I work now a different place and then it's just been like one thing from another since then um, and it's actually just broadened my horizon so much more um, I've met so many different people from around the world I think I can travel almost anywhere now and have someone I can go and visit um, when I get there um, and it's just it's just been amazing um, and just helped me just it's just so great to do something that I'm passionate about. Whereas I couldn't have said that before uh, when I was just doing like the analytical stuff without Tableau. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much to both of you for uh, getting a look, giving us a little bit more insight on Tableau and your careers within it. Um, that was it from our side with questions. I don't know if Fernanda have, has any quick follow-up questions that she may have, but after that, um, Jesse can kind of, take the lead uh, in wrapping it up. Well, uh, thank you. I, I have a quick question. I, I would like to get certified in Tableau as well. I'm contacting um, the Salesforce people here who um, give up a, a short course and then I have to, to take the test. Is it hard? Do you know anything about this uh, test? Is it the, the examination? Is it the specialist that you're looking at? Uh, what 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 types are there what what are the different types <laughs> i'm, I'm so learning <laughs> sorry for my basic questions i'm so sorry so for, for desktop there's three types so there's specialist oh. um a, a associate and professional yeah, something like that they, they change right. the name occasionally but um uh -huh. So the specialist is the first one. Um, oh, okay. It actually never expires, which is a great thing about the specialist oh, exam. Okay. Um, and so that'll format, be the one. Yeah, and it's multiple choice. So um, you you don't need to build anything and, and submit it in Tableau, but you you'll need to use Tableau to get to some of the answers. So it may ask you something like, "What was the profit in the South region in December?" So you mm -hmm. need to be able to use Tableau to get to those to those answers. Um, mm -hmm. So you do need to be able to interact with the tool. Um, but I think that Tableau recommends using Tableau for around, I think it's around three to six months before attempting that exam. And it's, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But so, yeah, I'd say as long as you've been using the product and um, you had a look at the practice papers and get a sense of what you're going to be tested on, I think you should be fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so but just one second. I said specialist, associate, and then I cut you. you the, the, the professional third? is professional. The, okay. is the, the, that one's um, different to the other two in the sense it's not multiple choice. You actually have to um, mm -hmm. build some dashboards and submit your workbook for a review. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. perfectly said. I think Sarah uh, captured everything. Yeah, it is three to six Thanks. months. Specifically, they say three plus months. Um, Jesse and I are preparing for that as well so um kind really? of uh, kind of the one of the prerequisite or 
they don't have a prerequisite, but we do um, leverage the e-learning opportunity, which is kind of like a full rundown of courses uh, of the basic tools, basic trainings within Tableau that might be helpful for you in preparing for this uh, specialist desktop exam. Obviously, it's a little bit different as you go up to the different exams from uh, specialist, associate to professional, but mm -hmm. um, I will throw down a link uh, for the um, basically a little guideline that they provide on the website. Uh, I'll drop it down there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course. There's a great website as well called learningtableau.com. Um, oh, really? You can pay, it's, it's about seven pounds, I think. I'm not sure what that is or where you are, but um, it, you basically, if you sign up to the website, you'll get free access to um, practice papers, which are great because you can pretend you're doing the exam, run through those, and then it will tell right. you if you've got any wrong, what you need to kind of focus on and why, why that answer was the correct answer. And I used that oh. for website myself when I was doing some of the other exams and I found it really useful. Uh -huh. well, which one is that website you mentioned? LearningTableau.com. Okay. There you go. I popped it in the, in the chat. Thank you. The link for it. So mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That. Okay. But, um, I'll save them all. Okay. Yeah, so if there Great. isn't any other questions on your mind, um, I would have popped a feedback form in uh, in the chat if you wouldn't mind filling that out. Okay. Um, and I've also put in a website where Tableau put up internships. Um, so if any of those interest you, um, you can save that save that page in book tab it, bookmark it, and um, come back to it. They update it. I can't remember how how frequently they said they update it, but it's it's updated as and when positions come up. Um, right. Yeah. If there's um if there's something else anyone would like to add or say, um, we'll be concluding our event. Awesome. That's and it. thank you again to Kendra and Sarah for thank being you. part of our panelist event. Yeah. Uh, we'll reach out to you shortly again to thank you again and hopefully. Uh, give you a little bit more of updates and follow-ups after our recording. Thank you so much again Brilliant. for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Take Thank care. You.